Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias from The Automator, and I got a really exciting video for you today. We're going to talk about, you know, using version two of AutoHotKey, how to basically use it, how to set it up, install it, and do some very basic stuff. The reason why we're pushing V2 is because V1 is now deprecated and V2 fixes a lot of the stuff that V1 had problems with. The thing is, setting it up is a little complicated, so we have a script that we're going to give you that makes it a little easier to download and configure your editor. And then we're going to walk you through some of the basics of doing stuff. So we're going to cover hot keys, using hot strings, simulating user input, like with mouse clicks and sending keystrokes, a little bit of troubleshooting, but nothing too much. We're going to keep this video nice and short. Isaiah and I both, we've been working with this for over 15 years each. That's 30 years of auto hockey experience. So, that's right. No pressure, Isaiah. Let's show them how to get this. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. So let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen. All right. So the first thing, just to touch on the point that you made, V2 is released and that's the only one that is available now as a major download. You can just click here. So the installation is really straightforward. You just click install you're done. Now, the one that we do want to talk about a little bit is site for auto hotkey. This is the editor that we were referring to. And what we're going to be doing is giving you a little script that makes some fixes to the properties of this, because there's a few options that are not there by default. And we think you're going to benefit from having those. But after you have it, this is the editor that you're going to be using. And you can switch between codes here especially V2, you can switch to V2, and this is what we're going to be doing. Make sure that you are in V2, and let's open up a new file. And this is going to be a test file that we're going to be using for showing a few things. Let me just rename it to test. That's it. So the first thing we're going to do is how to create a hotkey. Well, this is simple. You pick any key on your keyboard, letter A, for example. You use two columns like this, and any code that you put to the right side of it would be executed. And just as a quick example, let's say message box, for example, and then I'm going to say, hello world is the standard starting point for any language. And we're going to run the script by hitting here. And every time I press the letter A on my keyboard, I'm going to get this message box. So this is how you create a hotkey. And this is kind of like the basic of the basic that you can do. As you start learning more commands, more and more commands, you will definitely get more complicated structures. And as soon as you need to have more commands for one hotkey, you would have to open and close the brackets like this and put the commands in there. So if you have multiple commands, you would have to put them in brackets like this below the hotkey. Beside that, we can, for example, run stuff. If you want to have a hotkey that opens a website, for example, you can use the run command and you can tell it the website that you want to open. Well, let's say the automator.com like this. And not only, and this is the part that I was saying, if I have several commands, then you would need the brackets. I will show the message box and we'll also open a website. Now, instead of using the letter A, let's use the enter key. Now, be careful because as soon as you save this, now your enter key is not gonna do anything else than doing this. So you're e effectively just blocking your enter key. Now let's run this. And if I go ahead and hit the enter key, I get my hello world, but I also see that my page opened. Now, this is the interesting part about this. Let's go ahead and stop the script because if not, the enter key is not gonna work. Right. I was gonna say, once you show a modifier with like using control or you know, yeah. control. Something. Now, there's three basic modifiers that you can use. You have the control key, which in other hotkey, you would refer to it with the caret like this. The alt key that you would refer to it with the exclamation point. And then you have the shift key that it is referred to with the plus sign. And the windows key, which you can use with a hashtag. So if you want control enter, you would have to put control enter like this. So now that you know how you can run several commands at once, how you can put control in here so that your enter key is normal. The hotkey now is control enter. You could do the same like this, but for opening a file, for example, if you have a path to a file here, if you do that, it would just simply open the file. If it is a TXT file, it would open with the default editor. If it is an MP3 file, it would open the default MP3 player. So. Change it to be notepad.exe so we can just demo that as a really simple example. Yeah. There are some programs that you don't have to specify the full path because Windows knows where they are. 
And at this point, if I just save this and run it, control enter would give me that. And it would also open Notepad, as you can tell. So this is very interesting. Even if it is a certain programs run like this, some others, you need the full path. Now, there's another interesting thing that you can do without a hotkey, which is really useful, is the hot strings. And hot strings are simply text expansions. So let's say that if I want to, every time I type .iv, it would write out device at the automator.com. At this point, if I type .iv and I hit an end character, like an enter key or a space or a tab, it would expand to whatever I have on the right side, which is really handy because sometimes that saves you time from typing and also make sure that you do not make simple mistakes like a comma or a dot or something that you mistype. Throw it back up there. Let's add one more to it. So notice how it's adding a space at the end. Right Show them here. how easy yeah. it is to get rid of that space if we didn't want right. it. Right. So that is because of my ending character, it was a space. So we can put some options. And that's what I was going to explain. In hot strings, you start with two columns, put your hot string, then put the two columns again, and then the expansion. Here, the first two columns in between them, you can put some options. And there's one of them, which is the letter O, which means omit the back ending character. That's what we're aiming for. Let's run this, say yes. And now .ib, if I hit tab, it does show me the email address, but I don't have a space anymore at the end of the email address. So this is really good. There are many other options that later on when you start studying, you will find out very useful, but you have to be careful because there are certain times that you might find yourself having some issues. Like for example, let's say that you have a hot string HW, hello world, and you use the exclamation point there. What happens is that that exclamation point we saw earlier that that in our hotkey has a meaning. It is the old key. So if you try to send a hot string like this, you might find yourself having some interesting results. Let's try it. Dot HW. Huh. It is interesting. I do not have the exclamation point there. Well, because that was translated to an old key. And actually you can translate many other keys like the enter key and so on. I will show you in a bit, but sometimes what you want is to send the text raw with the R command here. And if I do that, my hot string now, everything that is there is treated as raw text and it's not going to be translated. So at this point, HW, it should have the exclamation point. You see the tab here. Let's make sure that I do not have ending characters being shown. So let's try that. And that's it. You, you can tell how easy it is to just set these guys up. So in the next example, I'm going to show you how you can use some special characters. Let's start with the double column here. Let's have text here. And I'm going to say this is some this, which actually means a carriage return. So line new feed. So this is what the editor is expecting here. So this is some interesting text. Cool. So I'm going to save this. And every time I run the script, you have been noticing that I get this pop-up asking me that, oh, you, I'm running the same script over and over again. You can disable that by saying single instance here. So this forces the script to only open one instance at a time. So I'm just going to force it that way. And now when I hit run, it's not going to ask me, hey, it was running. Yeah, I know that it was running. So now notice that I get a new line in between. So this is telling you, <clears throat> I can send special characters in my text. Like let's say, for example, that I want to move the, uh, the caret a few lines back. I would say left five times. That will move the caret five times before sending the next part of the text, which is going to cause some overlap. You will notice that yeah. in a second. Right. So it's going to be funny, but but it's just to illustrate what is happening. At this time, notice that it says this is interesting text sum. <laughs> so basically, I, I wrote the word sum, then moved the caret five to the left, which effectively put it here, and then it sent interesting text before the word 
So it, it is interesting what you can do with it. Yeah, this is the simple ones that you can do with auto hotkey, creating hotkeys, creating hot strings. That's the most that you will see auto hotkey being used for. But you can also do another type of things, which we would call simulating user input. Let me give you a, a visual example of what I'm referring to. Let me go ahead and open up this guy right here. Let me open up. This is some old script that I had before. What it does is that it allows me to save the coordinates of my screen into my clipboard. Let's run it with a hotkey V1 because that's what it had at that time when I was. Now you can see my cursor showing up here, right? And what I'm gonna be doing is just saving some positions. Let me just do this. Let me save this, 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 this. And let's finish up right there. Let's go ahead and do. And that's what the script did. It just copied the locations that I clicked with the click command in it. So let's go ahead and use whatever we learned about hotkeys. Let's create a hotkey here. And as I need to send many clicks, I would just put them within the brackets like this. And now every time I press my F1 key, it would just do this. So let's go ahead and save it, run it. And let's bring up our calculator. And if I press the F1 key on my keyboard, it just goes ahead and presses those locations automatically, which is awesome. And you saw how easy it is. Basically, the only thing I did was just to tell where to click. So I'm simulating as if I was just clicking those locations myself with the mouse. There are other things that you have to take into account with these kind of things, but just shows how easy it is to create these type of scripts and just assign it to a hotkey, whatever you want. Now, you, you have another option, not only sending clicks like this, you can send as if you were typing with the keyboard. So you can simulate the keyboard input as well. At this point, you can say, if I press the F1 key, I want to send, this is, now I want to send a tab, some test text, enter, that will be different. Okay, so this now is simulating my input in the sense of it is gonna tell whatever program I'm sending it to that I'm typing on my keyboard, even though I'm not really typing on my keyboard. So now if I press F1, it actually does the whole thing that I told it to. It is gonna type part of it, it's going to add a tab. It's going to hit an enter key. So as you can tell, I can simulate it in a way that any program where I put it, it would just behave as if I'm typing straight in there. So again, I think this is kind of like a very simple introduction as to what Arahat can do. And it is amazing how much control you have over the keyboard, the mouse, and actually very quickly, you can create automation scripts that might make your life easier. Actually, Joe, you do this all the time. Like, oh, I have to input 25 files yeah. into whatever. Yeah, I just write a few lines that it will do the same action over and over again. And that's it. That's what AutoHotKey is for. So most people that come to AutoHotKey, they start off doing this type of stuff where you're imitating a human. With some practice, there's actually far better ways to use AutoHotKey to programmatically, it's called an API, programmatically control the programs. They're much, much more reliable, but this is a great intro. So a couple quick things here at the end need to look out for, like that, actually that location there, the that's, there's different types of location, one's relative to the screen and that. So if you moved your calculator, that thing would have broke, right? Because it would have yes. in the same place, but you could tie it to that calculator, right? Which would help with that. But the other one is Make sure you save, make sure you reload your script, that the system tray icon. Can you actually show that real quickly? Because I don't think we talked about that. Right. So as soon as I save, I make sure I save, I run my script. And here at the bottom, you can tell if that is not there, it means that your script is not running. If I don't see it, then I know, oh, maybe the script is not running. Oh, There's no chance something. for it to work. Right, exactly. It's, it's not working because it's not running. Some, some things like that. And if you, is site set up where you can hit F1 on a key? Let me key? try that. So this should bring up your AutoHotKey help file, which is phenomenal support. The help so. file for AutoHotKey is amazingly good. I think that's the best thing that it has. It's clear, it's concise, and it gives you 
really quickly, very good examples of what you can do. And again, I just select, put my mouse on top of that one and hit F1 and it opened the help file on that page. I didn't have to even search for it. So yeah. And it's a local help file. So it's on your computer already. So it makes it really fast and easy. So we also have live Friday support, free support. Every Friday we're on YouTube streaming. So if you need some help, um, feel free to join that. Let us know if you have any questions here, comment below. And I'm going to put a URL up here also where we can learn more about auto hockey. It's the same ones over my shoulder here. We have courses and stuff as well, but hopefully you enjoyed this. Please like the video if you learned something. Thank you.